Hello everybody, it's Ryan going over another anatomy review of the human body. This will help you understand your body and how it works when you squat, bench, and deadlift. It will also help you understand lower back pain and it will help you for your NASM test. I want to cater this video to everybody that's trying to get better and stronger, figure out their pain problems and get better with uh, passing the NASM test to get better as a personal trainer. And if you're not a personal trainer, maybe you're just trying to get a better understanding of how the human body works. Now, related to the certification test, we're gonna go over the lumbo-pelvic hip complex or that dysfunctional area, the functional area of the body, the lumbo-pelvic, the lower back and the hips, basically, of the body. And we're gonna go over kind of what, uh, what parts of the, what causes dysfunction faults in those areas, what muscles are tight, what muscles are weak, and how we can fix those problems. Now, when we go over this, understand that there's a chart that you can look up in your book, I'm sure, that tells you all the muscles. It'll say like overactive muscles, and then I'll have a list of like four or five, and then I'll have like underactive muscles, and then they'll have what muscles are weak and what muscles are tight. That chart is fucking hard to remember. It is hard to remember because I don't remember muscles like that. I don't remember muscles on the list. I remember where they are. Bicep, tricep, quadricep, hamstring, glutes. That's how I know. I know my glutes do this. They externally rotate the hip. They do lots of, they extend the hip. They do a bunch of stuff. And that's kind of how I'm going to teach you or I'm going to go over it. So that way you can better understand the human body and a functional practical application of how these movements work with your body and not so much memorizing a chart. You may still have to memorize a chart to pass a test though. So keep that in mind. Now when going over the lumbopelvic hip complex and reviewing someone from a side angle, you're looking at their lumbopelvic hip complex. Lumbo as in lumbar spine, pelvic as in pelvis. LPHC as in noted on the overhead squat chart when you do an assessment with a client. Now, one of the first things to consider or one of the first check marks going from top to bottom is excessive forward lean. When their body begins to lean. So if they're squatting, they are leaning forward. Now, is this leaning forward? It sort of depends. The one angle you're looking at is the angle of the torso to the shin. If their torso, as they squat, stays parallel to the shin. Now, you can see my arms are falling forward. Again, as a, as a disclaimer, I'm very stiff and I'm very tight. But if this lumbar, lumbar, lumbar region, torso region, and you squat, and they squat, and they can't stay fairly parallel, what's gonna happen is you have, you have your shin angle, look at my shin, look at my torso, and you wanna imagine lines that go like this. So my shin's right here. Okay, I'm gonna get a PVC pipe. This will help you get a better visual of what excessive forward lean means. This is their shin angle, and they begin to squat, and they have their torso angle. And what you're looking for is their torso begins to basically do this. So if you look at my torso, if I'm leaning forward, I'm going to have my torso, this, is my, this, this, this one will represent my shin, and this PV side will, re will represent my torso. So if I squat, basically what's happened is my torso and my shin are kind of moving together. Let's see if I can do this, it's kind of funky. I've actually never done this before. Right, and my torso and my shin, and I squat, and you see how it's kind of parallel. I can barely see there in the camera there. It's kind of parallel. This is actually considered forward leaning a little bit. But if I was like this, for example, this wouldn't be forward lean. If you see that, if you can imagine a line, you see how this, this back here, this torso PVC pipe is represented. This would be considered excessive forward lean because their torso is intersecting their shin, their shin angle. Okay, so that's, so what, that's what causes excessive forward lean. There's lots of things that cause excessive forward lean. The first of which, which might be hard to grasp and remember, is their ankles. The ankles cause excessive forward lean. Why is that? Because if I'm squatting, I, I do have excessive forward lean because I'm very tight, so you'll be able to see this. If I squat down, you see how I'm excessively forward leaning? My torso is essentially intersecting my shin angle because because I'm trying to keep my heels on the ground. Watch what happens when I pick my heels off the ground. What happens to my torso? I correct my position. So what happens is my ankles are very tight. My calves are tight. What else is tight when the excessive forward lean? What causes the hip to flex? Hint, hip flexors, right? Hip flexors causes the hip to flex. 
So if you're squatting and you're excessive forward leaning, another muscle that's probably tight is your hip flexors. What are your hip flexors? What quadricep muscle crosses the hip? The rectus femoris. What else? The psoas that connects to the, the femur bone up into the lumbar region. And then you have the iliacus. And then you have some other, I'm sure I'm missing something. Some of the adductors are hip flexors as well. I can't remember all of them on the top of my head. Will lead to excessive forward lean. Right. What else causes excessive forward lean? Your lats, having tight lats. The tightness of the lats will end up pulling your arm down, which will essentially make you want to fall forward as well. They're connected. I know arms falling forward is another segment of the assessment, but understand that the lats are also involved, causing excessive forward lean if the muscle is very tight. So lats are tight. That's what's happening. That's excessive forward lean. Now, lower back arches. What does lower back arch mean? All you're really looking for when you do a lower back arch is you're looking for a noisy spine. So if you look at my lower back here, hopefully you can see this in the camera. I'm leaning forward and even though my back looks like it's arched, it doesn't even look that bad. It's fine. What you're looking for is essentially an extension moment. When they go down, see it's fair, my back's fairly neutral and as I go down, I may exaggerate this this, uh, this spinal arch because I'm missing range of motion, I'm tight, I'm weak, I don't have motor control. There's lots of reasons why, but understand that think of low back arch as spinal fault of extension. Extension or hyperextension. What's tight when your lower back hyperextends or arches? Your low back, your spinal erectors, your lats. Why your lats? Because if you look at an anatomy chart, all those muscles are back there and they're involved in the movement somehow. The lats have to be tight. What else is tight? What is weak? The muscles, the abdominals. Because if your lower back arches, your stomach helps bring things in and keep you in the neutral. What else? And your lower back arches, what else? Think about this for a second. If, I active, if, I'm, if I'm hyperextended in my back and I squeeze my glutes, look what happens to my pelvis. It, tilt, it rotates forward almost into a posterior tilt. It's not even posterior tilt, it's actually just going into neutral, right? So lower back arches. Now what if they do lower back round? So when someone squats, the lower back will arch or it will round. Or it could do both, it sort of depends, because it could arch on the way down because they don't have good motor control in their lower back, and they get to the bottom here and they have fairly good, uh, they can get down to this position here, they have good ankle flexibility, for example, so their back rounds into a butt wink. Essentially what lower back rounds is a butt wink in the squat. And if you're familiar with what a butt wink is, it's just the pelvis rotating too soon. It's when this pelvis, if you can imagine my belt, if I have a, I don't have a belt, but this a PVC, PVC pipe is, learning, is proving to be a very useful tool. So this is my belt line represented by this PVC pipe. This is anterior pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt, Okay, so this is ant so pelvis, right? Neutral pelvis. And then as I begin to squat, well, what happens if I get to the bottom, my the hips will round and then this, this hip angle will go up like this. Kind of a bad example. I don't know if you understood that. Hopefully you did. And that has to do with lots of things. People say the hamstrings are tight and that's true. But the problem is if you are new to training or you're new to the human body, you may already know that that doesn't really tell you anything. Uh, I mean, not anything that you can help because if you stretch someone's hamstrings, it doesn't really help improve their butt wink, at least with my experience. So it's really more about motor control. So that means strengthening the muscles actually does a lot more for eliminating lower back rounding than it is actually stretching. But stretching is still important. I'm not disagreeing with foam rolling your, your hamstrings, but the thing of the lumbopelvic hip region, the thing you have to consider is all the muscles that attach to the, to the lumbopelvic hip region, or in this case, the hips. What muscles attach to hips? There's a shitload of muscles that attach to the hips. The lats attach to the hips, believe it or not, right? They attach. Look at the anatomy chart. Glutes are around the hips. Spinal erect, I mean, your uh, uh, psoas, psoas muscle, rectus femoris, hip flexor muscles. They attach into the hip or into the spine region, the lumbopelvic hip complex from the femur bone crossing through the hip and into the spine on this side. Then you have the iliacus, which kind of goes inside the, the inside of the pelvic bone, right? That, that affects the way the pelvis moves. If, if nothing does their job, think about this for a second. The hamstrings adductor complex, 
adductor longus, hamstrings, glutes, lots of different things. But let's just think about the hamstrings and adductor complex for a second. They insert right here, like right there. What's happening? If they squat down and they don't have the control, the lower back will round because those muscles are significantly stronger than the muscles of the lower back and the abs. There's not a good enough motor control. So your hamstrings and your lower back are fighting for work to either keep the pelvis in neutral or arch it and round or arch it or round it. You have to a lot of this has to be taught through mechanics, teaching them a person how to squat correctly. Everyone's gonna have a different approach. But understand that the muscles that are tight are the muscles, the bigger muscles that attach to the hip. That's a one way to remember what muscles are tight when you talk about the lower back rounding because that's essentially a butt wink and that's typically the hamstrings or the hip extenders typically like the adductors or some of the adductors not all the adductors because remember there are some adductor muscles that cause that are in the front that cause more hip flexion and then you have adductors that are involved more with hip extension all right so we talked a lot about all right so i talked a lot about these movement dysfunction and patterns on the NASM overhead squat chart and kind of what you're looking for when you're assessing a client. And now let's talk about how to correct these movements. I'll give you my opinion and I'll give you what the book tells you or some of it at least. And this is kind of how I view things. This is my experience, practical application. Understand that I first got certified in NASM back in 2004. Fox, like 10 years ago. Anyways, so I have a pretty good knowledge base and I have a lot of experience with all this stuff. But excess forward lean has tight hip flexors, tight calves. Correcting the calves, the ankle flexibility and calf flexi and, and hip flexibility will be very necessary. So how do you improve excessive forward lean? And the squat would be to simply stretch the calves, right? Foam roll and stretch the calves. Simple calf stretches, leaning here against the refrigerator, digging that heel down on the ground. Pretty simple. Got to work on it every day. Use the calves to roll out the calves using a foam roller. Then we have hip flexors being tight causing ex caused by excessive forward lean. Right, squatting down, hands above head, leaning forward. Could mean the lats are tight, gotta stretch the lats, right? Stretch those lats out. In the book, they use a ball and then they lean forward on the ball. Hand is supinated into a stretch, right? They'll ask you questions like this. Billy Bob is squatting and exhibits excessive forward lean. Which of the following muscles is not tight? Yeah, it'll give you some crazy ass shit like that where you're gonna be like, and then you're gonna freak. That's how people fail because you don't know your anatomy. If you know your anatomy, you know, it'll, it'll say something like deltoid, right? Or there'll be some basically some obvious, there'll be or tibialis anterior. You know, if they put that shit on there, that's pretty fucked up. Excessive forward lean, which of these muscles aren't tight? Tibialis anterior, you might actually think because the tibialis is in the ankle, you would think that's actually tight. Anyways, I'm getting a little off topic, but my point is, is that excessive forward lean, let's go back to what I was talking about. Hip flexors are tight, so stretch out the hips. Lunge stretch. If you watch Kelly Starrett's stuff, that would be the, uh, the couch stretch would be a good one, which I can't really demonstrate right now. Okay, so hip flexor stretch, foam rolling the quads, foam rolling the adductor. Stretching the adductors definitely helps because excessive forward lean caused by tight ankles, tight calves, which is caused by tight, tight ankles caused, are caused by tight calves. Excessive forward lean by having tight hips, lats being tight, stretching the lats helps minimize the opportunity for the lats or these tight muscles to make your body move incorrectly. So then you have to strengthen your body so that you can maintain your patterns. How do you strengthen? Everything is gonna come down to the hips and the core, the lumbopelvic region. Being able to prioritize your spine, bracing your stomach. I made a video on lower back pain and squatting and I kinda, I'm kinda going over some of the same stuff. Keeping the stomach tight, keeping the core nice and solid, and then when they squat, using the hips, to help stabilize, keep the spine in a good neutral base. And you're not extending by hyperextending the back or doing a, a lower back arches or doing a, a lower back rounds where you're doing a butt wink. So it's important that the core stay very braced and very tight so this is strengthening the core. This is motor learning. You have to teach the body to stay strong, 
maintain a strong position, and it's only going to do that through doing the movements correctly. So how would you teach someone? What would you strengthen? Well, squats, primary, prime movers are legs, quads, hamstrings, and glutes. So the problem is when someone squats heavy weight or squats really fast and they have all these muscle imbalances and movement dysfunctions, it's going to lead to some sort of injury, especially if the individual is very weak. Lower back arch, as you think about that, if your lower back's arch, what prevents your lower back from excessively arching? Having a tight stomach. Just I want you to do this example for a second. If you're standing and then you arch your back, you can probably feel your back get tight or contract, or you might feel your hips stretch if you have tight hips. But now I want you to brace your stomach and then lean back. What's that feel like? It's almost like your abs are stretching. And that's kind of what you're doing. If you brace your abs and then your back wants to hyperextend, it won't or has less likely to because your stomach are your stomach muscles are very much engaged. Same thing. If you're squatting down and your stomach is tight, you're going to be less likely to roll because you basically would have to relax your stomach in order to create that pelvic tilt almost. Lower back rounds, same thing. Again, keeping the stomach tight. Loosening up the hip flexors, adductors, especially the hamstrings, this posterior chain hamstrings, being able to stretch out the piriformis also that allows for really good external rotation in the hips or in the knees. That way you can get down into a full squat without any lower back rounding or lower back arching. This will only happen if you strengthen the glutes and the hips. So if the lower back rounds, what muscles are probably weak? The glutes. You're going to find it's always going to be glutes. It might say, I mean, I think in the advanced certifications like CES, which I can barely remember, I'm CES certified, is that they might want you to know like gluteus medius, gluteus minimus. They might want you to remember these things, like very specific muscles, like your QL muscle, the quadros, quadratus, labradorum, um, your psoas. They might want you to remember these specific things, but you need, just, need to just get the gist of the motion the motions that need to be fixed and solved.